Hey everyone, my name is Praying for Exits. I run a venture capital fund called Exits Capital and also have a media business called Exits Media where we talk about technology stories and the things that affect venture capital. Today, we're gonna to talk about the all new Rabbit R1 and why I think that it could change the way that we use AI in a potentially very scary way. Let's get into it. To really understand the Rabbit R1, I think it's important that we touch on who the founder is. Jesse Liu is a prominent technologist and entrepreneur who is particularly known for his work with AI powered device and operating systems. He was born in 1990 in Xi'an, China, and Jesse has established himself as a serial entrepreneur. He's based in Santa Monica, California, and is recognized for founding a few businesses in the space and has been honored in Forbes 30 Under 30 and things like this. This leads us to 2020, where Jesse founded Rabbit Inc. Rabbit is an artificial intelligence startup developing a personalized operating system through a natural language interface. On top of that, it has a dedicated, affordable consumer hardware platform to host the operating system. Rabbit operating system is capable of understanding complex complex user intentions, operating user interfaces, and performing actions on behalf of a user. The key technology powering Rabbit OS is a large action model, LAM, a new type of foundational model that understands human intentions on computers. For their first product, the Rabbit R1, they partnered with Teenage Engineering, which is a Swedish electronics company known for its innovative and aesthetically distinct musical instruments in consumer electronics. I think it's really important a company like Rabbit partner with Teenage Engineering because one of the biggest drawbacks of some of the other AI-enabled hardware platforms was their functionality wasn't great. And aesthetically, they looked a little bit weird and maybe too futuristic for the average person to really care about. I think that the partnership with Teenage Engineering really helped Rabbit create a platform that was kind of fun, kind of whimsical, maybe reminded some of people, at least in my generation, of like the Game Boy Color or something like this that just seemed to be a form factor people were comfortable with. The way that you can think about the R1 is basically a handheld artificial intelligence assistant. The R1 is supposed to take over tasks that an assistant would normally do. A great example of this is they, they pointed the R1 at a fridge with a variety of different ingredients in the fridge and asked the R1, hey, what is the thing that we can make using all these ingredients and please provide me a recipe and how long it'll take and how to put it all together. And it was able to do that. The R1 is great because with the camera, you can interface with the real world and gain a very granular understanding of it while also being offered proactive solutions as to what to do with the real world. The Rabbit R1 is very attractively priced at $199 and as a result of that has quickly sold out 50 thousand units in the first couple of weeks. It's powered by Rabbit's OS, which is Rabbit's proprietary large language model. And it is capable of doing everything from navigating app interfaces, arranging transportation, managing household duties, and fielding questions. One of the most interesting features about the R1 is its dedicated training mode, which allows the users to teach the R1 specific commands for future interactions, and really allows you to personalize the device to use it in the way that is most useful to you on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the things that I love most about the Rabbit R1 is that it stands out for being a unique blend of very forward pushing technology, as well as having a very nostalgic feel, I mentioned before, kind of like a Game Boy Color. And that makes artificial intelligence, to me at least, a little bit more approachable for the general public. Instead of having to go onto these websites or utilize something like ChatGPT, you have something in your hand that's a little bit more tactile and you can use it to interface with the real world, which I think that's probably where artificial intelligence is going, taking the real world inputs like people, places, things, etc., and using artificial intelligence to make make all of those processes a little bit more efficient. Do I think that the Rabbit R1 is a long lasting product? I think it's really hard to say, to be honest. People thought things like Blackberries were gonna be a really long lasting product. And when the Apple iPhone came out, nobody could understand why you would pay $700 for a phone that didn't have a keyboard. So I think it's really difficult to tell. But what I do think that is interesting is it kind of opens this new paradigm for using artificial intelligence in the real world and doing it in a way where it's really just approachable. The R1 looks like something that somebody, an older generation of my family could use and find it pretty intuitive to figure things out. And so to me, that's the most exciting part about it is that it's putting artificial intelligence, no pun intended, in the hands of everybody and just making it super democratically available and useful to a wide variety of people. I think that there are potential things that could be negative about having an artificial intelligence platform in everybody's hand. I think that it might take away from like normal human interactions where there's a little bit of mystery, a little bit of thoughtfulness and a little bit of spontaneity in the way that people interact. But I think that overall the pros outweigh the cons and there's probably probably a lot of great things on the horizon for having artificial intelligence interact with the world around us in as many ways as possible. I personally bought one and I'm really excited to play around with it. I think that it'll be useful for venture capitalists generally, maybe not me specifically. I don't even have an assistant, so I like to kind of be a lot more hands-on with the way that I do things. But I do think for people who are like extremely
extremely busy or just don't want to go through the hassle of doing things in a more manual way, this could definitely be a very interesting augment to your technology stack that could potentially make your life a lot easier in certain ways.